Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. My name is Anurag, and you're watching Dieting Muscles. Guys, today's topic is about the energy currency of our muscle cells. From where does the energy comes from? The actual source of energy. Whenever we eat, what happens after eating in our body? How does the food converts into energy? So we will be talking about, and also I will be explaining you that how can you use that energy to gain muscle. to burn fat should you include cardio in your workouts etc etc so stay tuned so starting with that what is the energy currency for our muscle cells that is atp guys adenosine triphosphate it's a compound which is present in our body which is responsible for providing the energy to our muscle cells now what happen guys whenever you eat something suppose you have a carbohydrate or fat of proteins the body converts carbohydrates and fats into glucose although protein is not converted into glucose as such that is a amino acid and that will not be converted into the glucose but the carbs and fats are finally converted into glucose when it goes into our body and if it is not used at that time then it will finally convert it into the glycogen which is nothing but your stored fat which is stored in the adipose tissues so now our muscle cells convert that glucose which is present into the atp one molecule of glucose contain 38 atps guys so you need to understand this that whenever you want to contract suppose you are doing biceps in gym okay and whenever you wish to contract contract your bicep or any other muscle you have to have atp present in your body at that time because without atp you cannot contract any muscle so it's a simple rule that no atp no contraction so whenever the muscle cell receive the signal from brain that okay you need to contract the muscle now now what happens the energy stored in the form of atp get converted into the energy which helps to drive the contraction of muscle Now there are many ways in which you can generate this ATP and you can utilize that. So basically there are two activities which you can do in your workouts and you can generate ATP from there and you can utilize that ATP in the form of energy to perform your workouts. Those are first activity is anaerobic activity and second activity is aerobic activity. What do I mean by that? Anaerobic means that is high intensity and in which of the role of oxygen is not that much high and aerobic means that a low intensity workouts and the role of oxygen is very high so let's quickly understand what are these two guys atp only provides energy that lasts for 2 to 3 seconds maximum so you need to have extra energy to drive the contraction right suppose you perform one set of bench press so you are doing in one set suppose you are doing 10 repetitions so you are taking your time and going one second up and one second down so ultimately it will take you around 15 to 20 seconds to perform the set so for that period you need to provide a creatine to your body now creatine is already present in the body if you are a non vegetarian you will have good amount of creatine in your body comparatively to the vegetarians but there are supplements in the market for different different companies which can provide you a called creatine phosphate now why this is needed it is needed because you need to understand the science behind it whenever you contract the atp molecule gets converted into adp molecule that is adenosine diphosphate and one phosphate molecule released whenever one phosphate molecule is separated the energy is released since you have a limited amount of atps in your body although they are very high in number but still you need to provide more atps so that you shouldn't break down during the workout so you need to provide an extra phosphate molecule to again combine with adp adenosine diphosphate and make atp more energy so that's why people use creatine phosphate as in their pre workout drinks this we are talking about anaerobic activities okay second thing which comes in the anaerobic activity is glycolysis guys now glycolysis is something which your body does for the daily use so glycolysis is something which converts the glycogen present in your body to glucose to form adenosine triphosphate which helps you to work all day long now this glycolysis system lasts for 90 seconds 
so which means that if you have enough carbohydrates present in your body you can perform better during your workout so that was a story of anaerobic activities till now we come to the conclusion that atp provides you only 2 to 3 seconds of energy atp cp which i forgot to told you it provides you around 12 to 15 seconds of energy and this glycolysis system provides you 90 seconds of energy so that's why this type of anaerobic pathway is required to perform the workouts which are high intensity which requires more muscles to contract at the same time so you need that energy at that time only you need that instant energy to boost up your muscles there is a second activity level as well what is that that is aerobic activity whatever the cardio you perform the cardiovascular activities either it is treadmill either it is bicycling either it is high intensity interval training hiit which most of you people have known so these type of workouts require oxygen whenever you run suppose you you run for 20 minutes continuously so at that time the role of oxygen will increase right so whenever you take oxygen your cell respiration takes place and finally it converts into the atp and helps to contract the muscles this thing lasts for more than 3 minutes 3 to 20 minutes of your continuous workouts all right guys this was my overall information on atps if you like the video make sure you hit the like button and also let me know if you have any questions then please do leave your questions in the comment box below and also subscribe my channel to stay tuned thank you